BS Free Witchcraft is a production of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. Nerd and Tie produces podcasts ranging from actual play to true crime, and you can find more at nerdandtie.com or join our Discord by going to nerdandtie.com slash Discord. Welcome to BS Free Witchcraft, your monthly guide to the modern witchcraft movement, minus a lot of the usual, well, bullshit. I'm your host, Trey Dorn, and, you know, it's always convenient to me when we do one of these episodes that I can get like some audio clip of something like maybe a news report on the topic we're talking about or some YouTuber or podcaster who like does something stupid and you know I can go disagree and be like hey waggle my finger but I don't really well I could find something like that for this month I don't want to because what I want to talk about this month is the, the current state of witchcraft discourse, especially online. And there are two kinds of examples I could find. There are, is either someone saying something stupid and horrible, and just a, a negative example of what we shouldn't be doing. And I, I could waggle my finger, and I'm sure there's plenty of stuff I could find out there that gets me upset. Uh, lo and behold, there is a ton of it. But... The thing is, is that I don't want to put the blame on, like, one creator for any of the negative stuff that's out there. It's the, the, the thing with something being widespread is that it's widespread. It's not an individual who is specifically responsible for it. It is something, the negative things in the community are things that many people are doing. And while an individual doing it may be perpetuating that, I don't want to turn my platform randomly on some person where they're not the only one, right? I feel like that would be irresponsible. And on the other hand, the examples of good discourse are just boring. Like, if I found some example of some witch saying something that I agreed with, why wouldn't I just... I mean, like, that's not the topic of the show. Like... Yes, what they said was correct, and that's the correct way to say it doesn't really make for interesting content or really any content. It's like, why not just go listen to that person's video or podcast or thing and not me? So I don't want to go down either of those routes. Instead, you're just going to have to trust me that what I talk about is out there, sort of. Now, I know some of you don't like it when I ramble, and some of you love it when I ramble. Uh, uh, good news, bad news, this is going to be a more unstructured episode than a lot of them. Um, I have like some nice, structured, scripted episodes that are prepped and ready to go down the line. Don't worry, I'll do something nice and organized for September for you. Knock on wood. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that this month because I'm a terrible person, yet you all love me. If you don't like me and you're listening to this podcast, I question why you're listening to it because this is a very personality-driven show. If you only just like me and don't love me, don't tell me that. Just let me live in the, the blissful ignorance believing that I am a beloved figure in this community and that everyone thinks I'm amazing. Okay? Let's just... We'll go with that. So it's really interesting to look at uh, witchcraft and social media, especially, because the modern witchcraft movement has grown to such, such a scale that you could spend a lot of your time engaging in a particular witchcraft community without ever stepping out into the broader world and not really experiencing what's happening on the, with, with the rest of the movement. Um, I have huge gaps in my experience in the witchcraft community. It's, I've been a witch for 25 years, but repeatedly at different times I have stepped out of it entirely. Stepped out of the community, stepped out of Discord, not because I stopped doing witchcraft, but because of not wanting to deal with people. So obviously when I was younger, um, in, in the late 90s and early 2000s, I was heavily involved in like witchcraft community stuff uh, I, I knew a lot of other witches in person I talked to them I was a member of a circle and 
due to a negative experience I had in that circle, I kind of stepped out of really any contact with other witches on purpose. I just kind of separated myself from the community for, for personal reasons. And I it just, when I came back, it was like five years later, I came back into the community and it was still like evolving. Like this is like 2008, 2009. Like I wrote some articles. I tried to get back into it. I immediately had, <laughs> believe it or not, sometimes you get backlash when you write an article talking about how certain uh, people are being negative in the community. And then immediately they go, oh, maybe I don't have to deal with these people at all. And you go like, maybe I want to go back in my hidey hole and not deal with these other witches. And, uh, yeah, it's maybe I don't want to have this headache. So that's what I did. It, like, I, I like dipped a toe in, wrote a bunch of essays, um, which are mediocre at best. Uh, some of them I reworked into episodes of the show, uh, rewriting most of them. But I, I, I did, like, not all of them were terrible, but... Um, yeah, it's, I I immediately, like, walked right into, I pointed out some toxic behavior and immediately got those toxic behavior, those toxic people came right at me, and I just went, I'm going to disengage, because I don't know if you know this, but I'm very opinionated, and if you've listened to the show for this long, where you've gotten to this episode and listened to all the previous episodes, that should be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it should be obvious how I immediately angered people. Um, and I just felt like not dealing with it at the time. And I went back into my hole. And so, like, I I dipped out of really, like, w w just, like, dangling my toe in there. I kind of really didn't jump right back in until the, like, the, me the mid-teens, like, the 2015. I don't know how to refer to that decades. The tens? The teens? What are we, what are we referring to, like, I guess the 2010s, but then... Yeah. That's it's gonna be much more convenient if we get further into this century. Yikes. Um anyway, so like twenty fifteen, I actually I got back into I, I really kind of like got back into witchcraft discourse online on Witchblur. And the the world had shifted, but not a lot. Like people had bad opinions. But because there were so many more people, like, the way social media amplifies misinformation is an obvious topic that we've all been talking about for, for a while now, just in general, right? And obviously the witchcraft community is no exception to this issue. But additionally, like, we see, like, almost like the memeing of some of this stuff, like bad ideas get turned into memes, which are then easily shareable. And then you've got weird stuff just gets passed around. Bad ideas become, I don't want to say viral because it's 2022. No one says viral anymore. Uh, but I almost did. And uh, I don't know why. But we kind of end up in this world where stuff just goes so much further. And now, in 2022, the state of things has changed altogether. It's Witch Blur is not the center of online witchcraft. I don't know if it ever really was, but it's where I was, so it felt like the center. That's where I got back involved, but, like, it is... It is a strange place. It is a strange place. The entire reason I wanted to talk about this this episode is because on TikTok, um, so I've been active on TikTok for off and on for the last year or so. Um, right, I take hiatuses where I don't do anything for months and then I'll come back and update a bunch. And I don't know if, when and if I'm coming back because it's just, it's a real easy way to burn yourself out on TikTok, trying to be a creator there for very low reward. Like, you're, the people who subscribe to you will very rarely see your videos. Like, maybe you're lucky if 10% of your audience actually ever sees what you make. Less than that most of the time. Um, 
it is not great of a platform. I honestly, I genuinely hate TikTok. Like, I like the video creation. I like the, the ease of creating. But, like, just trying to follow people, like, whose updates I do want to see is sometimes hard. And I have to, like, there, there are some people who, like, it won't even show me on my following page. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like, I have to go to their profiles. The, the entire algorithm-driven thing is a mess. But I'm on TikTok. And there is a community of witchcraft on there, which we, you know, witch talk, which we've talked about it um, before, like the the whole stuff with the moon and what didn't didn't happen there, and how rumors get overblown on social media, I guess, in previous episodes. But what happened was is that I got tagged in this guy's video where someone had claimed that Wicca was culturally appropriative and now if you've listened to the show before you know i'm a wiccan and you know that while i fully acknowledge and actually have yell a lot about cultural appropriation in wiccan spaces that um wicca itself like the core of what it is as a religion is not culturally appropriative like there are many wiccans who do cultural appropriative things as a part of their wicca but the core of the religion, like the actual thing that makes it Wicca, is not inherently culturally appropriative. I got a whole thing. It's a complex, nuanced thing. And this guy, I got tagged in this video, and I think it must have been in a reply to someone block because my notification didn't go away, but the comment's not visible. So this must be the block. This guy was just saying that actually it wasn't culturally appropriate, but he was being a complete dickbag about it. <laughs> like... He dropped the R slur. It's, I just like, okay, I don't want to engage with this guy, but who's he replying to? And who's telling him that witchcraft is culturally appropriative? So I followed that comment back. And I was like, okay, maybe I can make a response to whoever this guy was talking to, right? Like maybe, because I've been off TikTok for a while. This is a topic I'm more than happy to cover most of the time. And I think explaining nuance like this is a thing, but I follow his comment back, and it's a 15-year-old. Dude is arguing with a 15-year-old. This adult man with a beard is arguing with a 15-year-old who made this kind of trolley video about, like, you know, when you tell Wiccans that their religion is cultural appropriation and, like, some audio about like someone freaking out and them rolling their eyes but I'm like I can't engage with this person <laughs> like I can't like what what on earth am I going to accomplish by engaging with this person right like cuz they didn't come to this conversation to learn and and be educated they didn't come to this conversation to like have one they wanted to say something either to like have people like clap and agree with them or they wanted to piss someone off for engagement like there's a list of things that the reasons why they could have done it but it's clear that they're not there for a conversation they're there to be and i was 15 once i did dumb shit like that all the time when i was 15 i understand <laughs> i understand the motivations um i i there are times when on the internet I would be exactly that much of a shit <laughs> when I was 15. It was the 90s and there were fewer people to anger and I couldn't put my face on it because we weren't dealing in video. But like, no, I, there is no benefit to me engaging with this person. If like, first off, if I use my platform to, to discuss nuance and things like that, it's not a podcast. Like on a podcast, I can have a, I can talk about something for a while and give it context and give it meat. You can't do that on TikTok. TikTok's not designed for that. Like, technically, I could upload a 10-minute video, but who the hell is going to watch that? There's a reason why nobody uploads 10-minute videos to TikTok. You stick with the, you know, 15-second to 3-minute videos. Like, people complain, like, warn people about, oh, this is a 3-minute video. It's going to be long. Like, I couldn't fit a, like, nuanced like conversation about the problems with cultural appropriation in the modern witchcraft community, uh, let alone Wicca within a three minute video. I have a hard, I've had enough hard enough time doing that. So like all I would be doing by even discussing it is amplifying the claim 
which I disagreed with. And I can't contextualize. I can't. There's no point. And I think that's that's one of the most interesting problems about like witch talk and the like. The problem is is that all of us were shitty fifteen year olds at one point. A lot of us. Okay, so maybe some some of the people listening, maybe you weren't shitty when you were fifteen. And I I would say like overall I wasn't a shitty person, but we all occasionally did shitty things when we were fifteen years old. And the difference is now is that in social media is like this person who like made this 15 year old has like 9,000 followers on TikTok. They're not a big creator, but like there is an audience for this person. And hopefully they're just other 15 year olds because, you know, the internet is a weird place full of creepy people. Um, But in any case, like now the shitty takes I had at, at 15 if I had had the internet and put my face on it, that's just out there in the community. And suddenly that's like, in God. Like, I'm not saying gatekeeping is good always, but occasionally, like, no one should have listened to me when back then. And the problem is, is that now we live in, in a world where every shitty idea is amplified. And... Now, normally, like on 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 Witch Blur or something like that, this would be a sort of thing I could ignore. Let's go away. Um, TikTok is interesting though because this is going to be served up to other people based on an algorithm, right? Like people who don't follow this person, like you in traditional social media, you had to follow people to know what stuff they were saying. Algorithm-driven social media like uh, TikTok doesn't have that. It can just show up to anybody. And what this means is that the dumb ideas get spread more than they used to. And since TikTok is so short form and so impulse driven, and this is I did, the problem with witch talk is that nuanced takes don't go anywhere. People come in hot and angry with hot takes. And then when someone disagrees with them, even if the person disagreeing is right, they respond in a tone that is usually angry and usually like, still without context and nuance. There's just, they, they impulsively say, like, take this, the idiot who did try to argue with the 15-year-old. This this guy immediately came in with snide, snarky comments. Like, he did not de-escalate the situation. He escalated the situation. He made, like, five videos arguing with this person. He, like, responded to comments and, like, just kept driving and driving and driving and upping it. And the platform rewards that kind of, of engagement. It, it awards this kind, uh, these arguments, these high engagement videos where people are just yelling at each other without actually like achieving anything of any kind of conversation. Like in long form media or in, in things that are more nuanced, like you can have a discussion, right? Like if you disagree with me on like something that I've said on the podcast, at least I've given you full context, right? And you can or if, on Tumblr. Tumblr's a better example because this is a podcast. This is one directional. But like on Tumblr, if someone disagrees with one of my take, like you can post like a five paragraph thing talking about it. And so even if you aren't de-escalating, because Tumblr should not be used as the example of well-rationed reasoned arguments, but it's better than TikTok, which is the most depressing sentence I've ever said. Um, like you can add context, nuance, and you can step things back on TikTok because you're forced into these tiny windows of content. There's no way to do it in any other deeper way. It's it encourages the increased hostility, encourages escalation, not de-escalation, because the the algorithm rewards that engagement and therefore shows that more and therefore you then make more of that content and you get rewarded for being mad and yelling at someone rather than actually like sitting down and explaining your point of view. Like, and the problem, and, and like a 15 year old is always, a lot of them are always going to be like that, right? Uh, younger people who don't necessarily have the experience being 50, like, let me tell you, being a teenager is a pain in the ass because, um, you have enough intelligence and you're enough of an adult to get yourself in trouble, but you don't have the experience to like 
know that maybe this is a bad idea and there's reduced impulse control. So, yeah. Yeah, you're you're really just smart enough to break everything. Uh, <laughs> and I say this is someone who was one who did that and uh, like, God, and the amount of power that people now have on the internet versus what they had when I was growing up, it's, it, it does not encourage solid, it does not encourage conversations. Like, oh, TikTok is bad, actually. Wow. Like, the entire concept of TikTok is bad. It was fine when it was, like, people just dancing or, like, magic tricks, fun songs. But man, is it shitty as a social network for conversations between people. Why? Why did anyone think this was a good idea? I mean, I know why ByteDance thought it was a good idea. They're making a bunch of money off of it. But I, I would hope if they haven't monetized TikTok properly at this point, I got real questions for, uh, yeah. But, oof. The world is a nightmare. Wow. Now, I don't mean to just completely just sit here complaining about TikTok <laughs> for way too long. Because it's, it's, that's like... Witch Talk gets a lot of the focus on like what's happening now in the witchcraft community, but online witchcraft discourse is really, really far spread out, and it's so different depending on what corners of the internet you're on, because while a lot of the younger people are on TikTok, so many of people are not. <laughs> the witchcraft community used to be, like, one thing, right? Like, everyone used to just, you know, Witch Fox got used a lot to find other people, and, like, you'd find people in, like, Yahoo groups and uh, forums. I'm so old. It's just all watch me turn to dust as I slowly realize how many things I just said that don't exist anymore. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of those older conversations still exist. A lot of the people who are in those communities are still out there and still talking. You know, we're not all dead. I'm here. I'm making this podcast. <laughs> it's uh. So obviously Witchblur is still around and has quieted down quite a bit from the days of its heights, but that's mostly just as Tumblr has, you know, reduced itself, um, you know, after the, the banning of female presenting nipples. And, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Those communities still exist, though, and... Tumblr, in many ways, I think is more suited for this. Like, obviously, Tumblr can be a reactionary, toxic place like any other platform. But at the very least, Tumblr at least allows for, like, say, nuanced responses. Now, a lot of people are going to ignore those nuanced responses and uh, are going to just come in hot just like they do on Witch Talk. And it's not great, like, 90% of the time. But there is at least some opportunity for discussion. And... Witch Talk and Witch Blur really kind of are the places, though, where you can talk to strangers about witchcraft. Like, obviously, um, nobody checks the tags anymore. Tagging is all borked up on Tumblr these days. But it's still there. Like, you can still find people from outside of your local community and things like that. What's really interesting is when you contrast that to, like... Facebook groups and the weirdness that are some of the witchcraft Facebook groups I have been in and encountered because it's an entirely different generation and world a lot of the time in those Facebook groups and it's so interesting to contrast like just even like the aesthetic which is like the the witch aesthetic between like witch talk and um and facebook because obviously social media like encourages a lot of uh, aesthetic posts even on like instagram on 
uh, you know, because of, and on Witch Talk, like these are very visual mediums. Like even Tumblr, with the amount of text posts you see on there, like the the entire website was created to share photos originally. If you go back into the full history of the site, and it really evolved into a blogging platform, it's the aesthetic itself feels different. Like, the kinds of memes shared on Facebook are different from the kinds of memes shared on other sites. Like, it feels like 10 years older. I don't know how else to explain it. And you get weird insular communities that are just... Like, I'm on a local uh, witchcraft and pagan group that I joined when I moved back. I, I, I live in um, northwestern Wisconsin, but I had moved away for a while, and I came back here like five years ago. And... Like, I joined a local Facebook group for uh, for witches and pagans, and just the, the vibe there was just so weird compared to what I was used to. And it's, it's not that it was unexpected. It was a vibe I have gotten out of parts of the witchcraft community for, for decades. But it was just so, like... How do I explain the vibe? Like... It felt like the early 2000s. It feels like the, the people I would encounter in the early 2000s. I think that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is that what people online and people on Witch Talk need to understand, and people on Witch Blur and people on all these social media, is exactly how many witches are not on witchcraft discourse social media stuff like how many witches are not on witch talk how many witches are not on tumblr how many witches while they probably have facebook are not on witchcraft spaces on facebook and when you find these people in the real world like you go out to your local metaphysical shop and you you talk to some of these people and they have no idea about half of the quote unquote discourse that's been happening for years in these in, in online spaces because they have never bothered to look and how disconnected, especially generationally, like a lot of older witches are from from these communities. And so the important thing to remember when you open up Witch Talk, or if you you know you open up, you know, you pull up some Tumblr tags that when you look at these things, these conversations are not necessarily representative of the witchcraft movement as a whole. Likewise, if you are not in these spaces, there are entire, like, vocabulary is separating. Like, there are terms that we don't use anymore in a lot of online spaces that are still used by people in real life spaces, and these conversations have never crossed over. Or... All of the conversations that we've been having online for years about White Sage, there are people who have never heard a single one of those conversations, who have never encountered any of it ever. And we have to remember, we have to remember that you will encounter people in the real world at some point who don't know that something might be considered bad and a faux pas in the space that you're used to existing, and you can't just immediately assume that the person who you are encountered making the mistake or doing the thing that is quote unquote bad, which it usually is actually bad. Well, uh, there are a couple of weird situations where yeah, it's a whole other episode. Um, like the person you see doing the bad thing may not have ever been told the issues with what they're doing and never been exposed to it. And just because it's something that you've heard online again and again and again, like some marginalized group has said, don't do this, please, and you've heard it a thousand times, do not ever assume that the person you see doing it isn't hearing this for the first time. Do not assume that this isn't the first time they've heard this because in all likelihood it is the first time they've heard the thing that you're telling them
So yeah, this whole thing's been a bit of a ramble, and uh, I apologize for that, but, you know, I felt a lot of some stuff I felt that needed to be said, and I didn't really have any other context to put it out there, so I figured, let's make it an episode, let's not try to shoehorn this into some other topic, I'll just, I'll just do this, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully this has been entertaining. Hopefully it's been educational. And at the worst case scenario, uh, I just gave you an episode that was like an hour long last month. So like, go listen to that again. And, you know, I'll, I'll be nice and organized next month for you. Anyways, as we wrap this up, I want to thank my patrons. I, I really want to thank my patrons. Uh, this show happens because uh, Patreon patrons who are listeners like you choose to contribute to the show. Um, if you contribute to the show, you get access to these episodes a whole week early. And I want to especially thank uh, my patrons at the shout out level of Stephanie Graves, Lindsay Dosey, Bruce Norville, Courtney, Amber Schmidt, and Echo of Truth, Claire Dennis, and Kayla Burkowski. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, um, you can even just a dollar gives you the benefits of the of getting the show a week early. And you can find my Patreon at patreon.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. Um, if you want to follow the show on social media, you can find the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash BS Free Witchcraft. You can find me on Twitter at T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N, on Tumblr at T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. I'm on TikTok, T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. Uh, I'm I'm on hiatus there right now, but I'll be back probably eventually. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll just randomly put up a. If I'm never not back, I'll put up a video saying I'm never not back. That'll make sense. There's a bunch of videos there though that some are entertaining and good. And see, so go watch those if you really want. Remember, the show is also besides being on all your favorite podcasters, from iTunes to Spotify to uh, Google Podcasts to Stitcher and please rate and review us on those podcatchers if you do we also there is a YouTube page for this where I post these uh, as videos where it's, it's just pretty much the audio over a static image but technically that exists if you prefer to consume your podcast on YouTube that is out there for you remember that this uh, show the BS for Witchcraft is a part of the Nerd and Tie podcast network and we have a discord where if you ever want to chat with me like about stuff i am on that discord and you can find an invite at nerdandtie.com slash discord and uh, there are other great shows on the network you should check out uh one of which is our newest show uh casual trek casual trek is a fortnightly star trek podcast where uh miles and charles who are both they're both nerds but they're primarily fans of other shows one's a big doctor who fan the other one's a huge x-men fan and they both kind of like Star Trek. And so they are watching Star Trek and uh, commenting on episodes. Uh, the first episode came out earlier this month. And the uh, second episode will be out by the time this episode goes public. Yeah, it comes out every fortnight. And it's just really, really fun. You should check it out. And you can find uh, Casual Trek at nerdentie.com slash trek. I think is the URL. Yeah. Slash Trek. And uh, you can find all the Nerd and Tie podcasts, including like Hex Positive with Brina Garen or, you know, the Nerd and Tie podcast at uh, nerdandtie.com. And with that, Majikins, uh, dirt in our fingernails, brick in our hands, let's get going.